Good afternoon, honorable guests, Mr. Bernard Chan, Archbishop Kong, members of the school committee, Ms. Lowe, members of the DBS teaching faculty, parents, old boys, friends, gentlemen of the class of 2017. Today, we rejoice in the success of our boys and the labors of our teachers. We celebrate the best and the brightest, the trophies, certificates, and scholarships. The printed report is in your hands, and I hope that you will take time to read it. We also celebrate the imminent graduation of a class from boys to men. We parade the hard-won victories and savor the success stories forged by unity, hardship, courage, and perseverance. For the past few years, I have spent my speeches observing educational and social trends. But this year, as I pursue my vocation here for the 25th year, I would like to take a moment and indulge in a bit of nostalgia, especially of my student days. These memories helped me put achievements into perspective. They taught me to be humble, to equip ourselves with the knowledge and character to face trials and tribulations in life. They've taught me to be thankful for those around us, our friends, our family, our teachers, our brothers in the worst of times as much as the best. I hope these few memories might help us catch a glimpse of what we aspire to be now and in the near future. These are simple memories of a young boy trying to find his way through adolescence, often without knowing very clearly his destination. It's about finding faith, vocation, and a calling with some unusual circumstances. There's no billion dollar success in the end, no fame nor stardom. Just a sim simple recount from one DBS boy to another about how our alma mater blessed us with essentially everything we needed to navigate through life. So here it is, three memories. The first is how greatness is actually built upon little things. Memory is a strange thing. As you look back, it doesn't play like a continuous movie or a photographic record. Most things slip past our minds, preserving only the essentials distilled into a few moments of genuine affection that stick with you for a lifetime. Often, the little things matter. People talk about brotherhood and upholding a legacy here. One of my earliest memories at DBS is exactly this. My early memory of brotherhood took place during the early mornings since the first day I arrived. This happened every day right before the assemblies when prefects would come to the classrooms to turn off the fans and the lights and would lead the young ones to the hall. During the short walk, the prefects would occasionally remind us about uniforms or other things, but they would also casually chat with my classmates as we walked to the hall. Prefects were enforcers of school rules, naturally, but also they were big brothers to the boys. More than any war cry, or victory in competitions, those little moments filled me with pride. It gave me a sense that this was not just a school, but a family where we all took care of one another. The little things mattered. Here's another snippet from those early years. Like most of you, I was incredibly excited to go to the sports ground and watch our fabled showdown between our top athletes and our arch rivals. I used to wait with great enthusiasm for the publication of steps and read through the captain's report to relive the spirit and the excitement of the fights. The year we lost, we were as heartbroken as the athletes on the track. We felt a connection in the air, a bond built through common toil. But see, that wasn't the most memorable thing. I remember the prefects asking us to pick up every piece of trash after the competition was over. Back in those days, we were the last people to leave the stadium and the ones that kept our own section immaculate. It spoke volume about our character. It certainly meant very much to us whether we won or lost, but it mattered much more how we handled failure when we fell short of our goals. By doing this seemingly minor act, we were telling one another that maintaining dignity in the face of adversity defines us 
as much as victory or defeat, if not more so. Loyalty to the school didn't simply mean cheering for the winners and bragging about it afterwards. It meant staying true to our cause even when we were temporarily overcome by adversity. Character and integrity means more than achievements. The little things matter. I've spent a lifetime in this school and much has changed, but I hope that the little things don't. Behind all this glory and fanfare, that tiny spark that makes us special, that willingness to go the extra mile, to do the little things that matter, remains. Next time you think about brotherhood, think not just about blood, sweat, and toil. Think about your friends. Think about what they need, how you could help them, how you could make their lives special, even with the little things, especially with the little things. My second memory is about letting our sense of wonder guide us. When I was a student, I joined many activities because I saw the extraordinary level of performance that my predecessors reached in their prime years, and I wanted to learn more about the craft that they excelled in. So I played tennis in the house level, I worked as a steps editor, I joined the debate team, I became a timekeeper, I studied German, and of course, I conducted and sang in the choirs and played in the orchestra. However, I never quite hit the heights my predecessors did. I started playing tennis enthusiastically, but never made it to the school team level. I joined debating and never got to become one of the top four speakers. I served on the floor team. We fought all the way to the finals that year, but were defeated by a stronger opponent. I studied German out of curiosity, but never mastered the language. I conducted the treble choir, enjoyed success in the first two years, but in my final year, we were defeated. At each stage, I joined various organizations with an aspiration in mind, and at every stage, I never quite hit the pinnacle that I aimed for. I wasn't the smartest student in the class, nor the fastest person on the field, nor the best player on the pitch, or the best singer in the choir. Compared to many of the stars, I could probably be classified as rather ordinary. But many of those ventures turned out to be great growing opportunities. I may have been mediocre in German, but the journey of learning it proved invaluable for my musical education later, as much of the literature was in German. I may have been a peripheral editor in steps, but it prepared me for writing papers and dissertations in the coming years. I was never a good orator, but debating taught me how to build a sound structure, think on my feet, and deliver a coherent and convincing case. As much as I am still by no means a good tennis player, I was able to use my participation in the sport as a mean to serve and help underprivileged children through facilitating different tennis-related community service programs. In short, I realized that my DBS education did not end when I graduated. In fact, it was only the beginning. These experiences sharpened me to develop grit, perseverance, and a hunger for growth. School life in that era at DBS is similar to yours now. Like most of you, a lot of victories into, into school and little achievements at school seemed like the world to us. At school, we would have fun, we would joke, like most of you, sometimes about each other, sometimes about teachers. But there was one crucial difference. In that era, our parents and teachers were not so accustomed to pri providing so much positive reinforcement to us as yours to you these days. We didn't get a like or a heart for everything we did. As much as we were sure that our elders cared for us, affection was often withheld. One of the things that we heard very often was that we could do better. And although we wished that we would receive more encouragement, we accepted that and kept trying. We believed that actions spoke louder than words. Ironically, perhaps that was the greatest encouragement. We let our sense of wonder guide us. Through continuously combating failure, 
we earned the keys to success. In face of adversity, we had little but brotherhood to fall back on. In an innocent age where the need for wealth and prestige hadn't surpassed substance and meaning, where materialism meant less than spirit, that was our world. My third memory is about finding one's own calling. When you look up to the skies, what do you see? The sun, the moon, the shooting stars. When I was a music teacher, my favorite thing was to take the choir to the field, form a circle, and start singing to the stars. In the dark of the night, we realized that our world was an infinitely small part of a wider universe. Our lives, a minuscule chapter in the epoch of space. Why are we here? What are we here for? Little did I know that my search for calling all started with a lost opportunity. In grade 10, my voice changed too late. I did not make the cut to the choir, to the chorus there, the worst nightmare. With a small dose of inspiration, however, and a little wish of luck, I went to Mr. Kang, our conductor at the time, and volunteered to revive the treble choir. Mr. Kang embodied what made our school special. He not only accepted my request, he so selected 60 quality singers and two senior boys to help out. There, I started my conducting career. A scrawny kid with a few dozen even younger kids, finding our way in the jungle of musical notes. Around this time, from time to time, my classmates and I would sit down and chat about our aspirations. Sometimes the image of a conductor of very significant international standing, his name was Claudio Abado, came to mind. He was not only a supremely talented musician, he also shared and worked with many, many young musicians. It sparked something in my heart. When God closed one gate, he opened another. That year, I decided to make another significant decision with my life. You see, I had been attending church all my life and studied the scriptures. But it was that year when I decided that I had to make a decision about this knowledge that I had. I felt compelled to face the fact that if God is real, then I ought to decide whether to commit my life to him or abandon this altogether. It was not merely about committing to a church or a set of rules or suddenly placing myself on moral high ground. On the contrary, it was coming to an understanding that I was a flawed human being, learning to trust an omniscient and benevolent God to follow his will for my life. Having made that leap of faith, that willingness to embrace an uncertain calling made my path clear. Fast forward a few years and I was studying for my master's degree. The real world was becoming more and more a daunting prospect and my path was yet again muffled. Where should I go? Where do I belong? It was around this time that I received Mr. Locock's letter. It was short, but succinct. It made a point that lasted a lifetime. The letter remains on display in my office, but the most important part of it read, if you follow your mind, you will be successful, but may not be content. If you follow your heart, you will be content, but may not be very successful. Perhaps you are like me, perhaps you're not, but I believe to most of us, it is important that there is inherent meaning in what we do. In this day and age, a case could certainly be made for pragmatism over idealism. After all, what is the value of finding meaning or making a difference in someone's life if you can't even make ends meet? This is a delicate balance indeed, but experience also tells us that if there is no inherent meaning to fuel one's efforts, it's only a matter of time when enthusiasm fizzles and life is snuffed out of you. With Mr. Lowcock's letter as the trigger, I decided to return to DBS. It has been 25 years. It remains the greatest honor and blessing in my life. I do not regret a second of it. No conventional metric of success could capture the experience of the past quarter of a century. To me, there is no greater satisfaction than to see us all grow and thrive. Boys, you will all find your callings in different ways. It may be a letter, a message, a random occurrence, it may be your faith or your ideology, but let your heart speak. 
let it illuminate your path. Because even when it looks foreboding, even when it looks impossible, that is still your surest path to contentment. We want to uphold this institution for you, the diocesan boys school for you all, because we want your hearts and minds to roam free to seek your dreams here. And so, those are my memories. I suppose they don't offer clear and direct inspiration to every single one, and they are not life-changing as individual occurrences. But I hope you see how the simple things in life, your sense of wonder and pursuit of a calling, all depend less on glorious victories than little things that pivot our lives for the better. I will conclude with this verse. Let us then be up and doing with a heart for any fate, still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labor and to wait. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. And departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Thank you. God bless you all, and may God bless the Dawson Boys School. <laughs>